Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Um, today we are working on an 18 by 24 level three gallery wrapped canvas. This is actually going to be a recreation of a previous painting, um, Thunder from Heaven. So Pastor Earl, who I've talked about before, um, when he saw this painting, he just, he kind of looked at me and he's like, do you still have that one? And I had sold it at Christmas and he was kind of disappointed. And so we decided that we were going to make him one and send it to him and surprise him. So I'm recreating Thunder from Heaven. Um, it is a double Dutch pour. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so the double Dutch pour, we are going to flood the canvas. We are going to do a base layer Dutch pour and kind of um, prep the background to kind of give us a different background. And then we're going to do another Dutch pour on top of that. We are going to be using all Deco Media Fluid Acrylic um, paints. So we've got the Primary Magenta, Pyrrole Red, Primary Yellow, and Cadmium Orange Hue. They are going to be going straight on. No um, additives. This is going to be straight out of the bottle. And then the background is prepped with, um, well, the background, the canvas is prepped with the Deco Art Americana Lamp Ebony Black and the Flood Color, oh, as I drop it, is going to be the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic Black with a little bit of the Media Fluid Acrylics Carbon Black added to it. And I also added some Matte Metallics Carbon, or sorry, Charcoal, um, to give our, our black background a little bit of a metallic look. Um, I did add a little bit of a flow troll just so we can get some more possible cell action and, um, and then some water. So the um, my mind just went blank this morning. It's been a busy morning. Um, the mixture ratio is down in the description as well as all the paint colors and all that kind of stuff. Um, last time I did this video, it was just music in the background, but today we are going to do it together and I'm going to walk y'all through it and kind of do an instructional double Dutch pour. Uh, my blow dryer is the Con Air Cord Keeper 1875. Um, I do the highest setting, highest air setting, lowest heat setting, and then I do use the cool button. Um, yeah, so we are going to get started. Um, stay tuned at the end of the video. I do have a word um, that I wanted to share with everybody, but um, I'm going to I'm going to put that at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that if you'd like to. If you'd like to hear what what word God gave me, and um, Maybe it was for you. Maybe it's for somebody you know. Um, but maybe it's just something that you'd like to hear. So stay tuned for that. We are going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to have some music in the background. But y'all are going to have to listen to me talk today. So we are going to flood. We are going to go ahead and prep the canvas and get it flooded. Making sure that our sides are completely covered. So I'm going to do a frame with our flood color, and then I'm just going to go around and kind of box all the way into the middle. I do have another cup of black standing in the wings ready to go, um, so I can use this full cup. All right, we're going to get this uh, blown out. Now that we got that part done, I'm going to add a little bit of water to my black because I think it's just too thick. It's not moving the way I want. Um, for the prep, for the flood, it's actually okay that it's a little bit thicker. Um, that's actually going to give a, a place for our paint to move. But I am going to make it a little bit thinner so whenever we add it to our other colors, our, it's going gonna, it's gonna to move better. So I'm going to thin this out just a tad. Okay, I think that's good. 
All right, so the next step we are gonna do is we are going to lay the groundwork, as, as I like to say. We are gonna do an initial Dutch pour. Um, we're just gonna do a, through the center and we're gonna push it out. And we're gonna lay the groundwork and give ourselves another background. That way when we do the big Dutch pour, kind of the off center, and we do the starburst out, we don't have to actually take it all the way to the edges because we'll, we'll have some stuff going on. It's not gonna just be the black. So we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna lay the groundwork. And again, we are doing with this with just straight um, media fluid acrylics straight out of the bottle. Pastor Earl has a very loud presence. He's one of those pastors that does not need a microphone. So we're going to make this very powerful, very explosive. Hopefully, that's the goal. Now we're going to push the black over the colors and then we're going to push it out and we're going to lay our groundwork. Technically, we could just leave it just like that, but we are going to continue on with what we were going to do. So, um, actually, I'm going to start right here. Normally, I do my stuff, but I'm going to I'm going to do this corner right here. So, I'm going to do some black first. I'm actually going to flip it around. Ooh, there we go. Now I can work in that corner. Make sure I'm still in focus because I need the canvas. Yes. Yes, we are. Okay. So then we are going to do orange. We're going to put a lot more color than we did originally because we want it to move. So we've got orange. And we're going to do the pyrrole red. We're going to do the yellow because we want another color between our two red hues. So we've got yellow, and then we are gonna put the primary magenta on top.
All right. We are all done. Um, technically, we really didn't need to lay the groundwork, but I'm kind of glad we did because we were able to leave that piece right there. And I'm going to I'm going to push that out just a little bit. You know me, I don't like hard edges. all right it is all done um so this is what the original thunder from heaven looks like and this is what this one looks like and i'm really happy with the, with the way that um this tart part turned out more red and um magenta because whenever pastor earl came to uh, the church on May 31st to preach. He was wearing a, if I remember correctly, a black, black suit, bright red shirt, black tie, and these bright red shoes. I mean, bright red shoes. So that's what I see in my head. And so that I'm so glad is what was able to transfer to the canvas because I really wanted that red to come out because that's how I remember seeing him that day. Um, so I'm gonna touch up these edges. All right, it is all done. Um, I probably won't do a part two on this. We're probably just gonna call this one a day. I will finish the, I will post the finished painting on my group YouTube channel as well as my Instagram page. So go check that out. Um, I don't have my heat gun in here to pop these bubbles. I will probably go and grab it so I can just pop all the little bubbles that I see. But we are done. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section and I will do my best to get back to you. Down in the description, links to my Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, as well as my website, guidedbyfaithdesigns.net, as well as my other website, guidedbyfaithdesigns.com. One, you will find my vinyls and my artwork. The other, you will find my tumblers and my sublimation items. <clears throat> Don't forget to check out my uh, uh, Facebook group, Paint Pouring for Christ. It is a place where like-minded individuals can come and celebrate God and what he's doing in their lives and share how he is moving through our paintings. Um, no politics, um, none of that, just just God's love and um, in our art. So go check that out um, on Facebook at Paint Pouring for Christ. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share, um, hit the little notification button. Two biggest ones, hit that, hit that like button. That helps um, me get higher in the queues and that helps more people see my videos and all of that. And of course, subscribe um, so you know when I have new stuff. So... That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Um, stay tuned at the end of the video for the up close macro shots as well as a video, up close video of the painting and um, the word that I have for somebody from God. So stay tuned for that. I will talk to y'all then. And as always, God bless.
everybody. Thank you for sticking around. So I just have a word from God that I, I feel that I need to, to say and, and had to put on video, which I've never done before, and, and share. And I, I don't know if it's somebody needs this word today, if somebody needs it a year from now. You know, today is July 19th of 2020. Um, so hopefully it, it, even if it reaches one person, it's, it's worth the uncomfortableness that I feel right now. <laughs> um, but I am going to trust God that this, this is what I'm supposed to be doing and what I'm supposed to be sharing. So my flesh hates me right now, but, um, my spirit is at peace and that's, that's the main thing. So I wanted to say, get out of his way. So many times we, we pray for blessings and we pray for God to move in our lives and we pray God to fix our finances, or our family and our relationships and, and our job and, and everything else. But we pray about it and we ask him to do it and all of this. And you know, and, and as soon as we say in Jesus name, we pray, amen. We walk away and we worry about it. We think about it and we dwell on it and we wonder about it and it consumes our life and we dream about it and we try and fix it ourselves and, and research every avenue to fix it and, and all the quick gimmicks to fix it. And, but the fact of the matter is, is if we could fix it ourselves, we, it wouldn't be an issue. You know, if we could fix our finances on our own, then we wouldn't be praying about our finances. We should be. You know, we should still be praying about stuff even when things are going great in our lives. Um, we need to pray for continued blessings and finances. And we need to pray for continued blessings upon the family. But, and, and that's the easy part that people get. People get the praying when things are good and praising when things are good. But the, the one that people miss and, and really block God's blessings is when we pray about stuff and then we walk away and we, we don't give it. We, I mean, we say we're giving it to God, but we really don't because we're still working on it ourselves. And until we actually fully give it to God and we completely release it and, and lay it at his feet and walk away for real, like really walk away and, and, and not worry about it and not think about it and not try and fix it ourselves. That's when God moves. That's when God has the opportunity to move because we are letting go and we are allowing him to work in our lives. We are allowing him to, to bring those blessings across our path, those opportunities that we've been begging for and, and praying for and asking for. That's when those opportunities are going to show up. Whenever, you know, we're, we're praying for our finances, that's when our finances start getting better. But remember that when you are praying and you are asking and you really do let it go and you lay it at his feet and you walk away and, and you allow him to take it fully and you get out of his way, be prepared to be uncomfortable because sometimes we are also in our own way. So not only are we standing in God's way because we're holding on to it, not fully releasing it to him, but even when we do finally release it to him, we're still standing in our own way. You know, we, we, we are irresponsible with our finances. We are unforgiving in relationships. Um, you know, just, just things that we do that we don't even think that we're doing that are standing in our own way and blocking our own blessings. So whenever you truly release it to God and you ask God to fix it, be prepared to be uncomfortable. Be prepared for God to come back and say, okay, you want me to fix that relationship? Then you need to apologize. Then you need to take the first step. Then you need to be the one to start the mending process, which in our flesh feels terrible. But, but sometimes our biggest blessings come in our most uncomfortable moments. You know, whenever we, we pray for God to fix our finances and he says, okay, you finally gave it to me. I'm going to work on your finances but you need to stop being irresponsible with your money. You need to stop spending it on stuff that you don't need. You need to tithe more. That's one we don't like to hear. You know, and a lot of people are saying, oh, the church just wants our money. It's not our money. It's God's money. God is entrusting us with it. So 
you need to tithe more. When you do your budget, you do your tithe before you do anything else. And when you start doing that, whenever you release that and you trust God that it's all going to work, you'd be surprised and amazed at what happens. You shouldn't be. If you're trusting God to, to do it, you, you should expect to see the results. But you, you, need to, you need to trust God. You need to be prepared to be uncomfortable. Like I said, some of our most, the biggest blessings in our lives come in our most uncomfortable moments. The biggest blessing in my life, which is my husband, came at my most uncomfortable moments. So, you know, when you, you finally do release it and you cry out to God and you, you fully give it over to him and you say, I am out of the way. I have tried to fix it. I can't fix it. There's nothing I can do about this. I am trusting you fully and completely to intercede in this situation and work everything out for my good. That's when it happens. That's when the blessings come. But you have to be prepared to be uncomfortable. You have to be prepared to let go. You have to be prepared to release control, which is a major issue for me. But but that's when God can move in your life. That's when God can do what you want. You know, when it comes to painting, and this is going to sound weird, especially to those of you who are watching this who are not painters and who are not, you know, watching this after we're done painting. Even in, in the littlest things, even in our paintings, God will move through you. And when you try and force it, that's when you're scraping paintings. When you try and force something that God didn't give you, and you're like, hey, yeah, yeah, I get it, God, I get it. You want me to paint this, but I really want to do this. You're going to scrape that painting. You just are. Every time I try and force something, I have to scrape it. But when I allow God to work through me, I get out of his way and I let him to guide my hands. That's when beauty happens. So my biggest thing for you is get out of his way, no matter what it is in life, whether it's blessings, whether it's painting, whether it's building something, whether it's whatever it is. Let God move through you. Get out of his way. Let him do it. You know, Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, my husband's favorite verse is trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. He will direct your path. The path that we lay for ourselves is flawed and it's wrong and it's misguided. And nine times out of 10, it's going to take us in the wrong direction. It's going to take us away from God. It's going to take us to where our flesh is comfortable. It's going to take us to where our flesh wants to be. It's going to take us where we can be in control. But it's not the path that, that God laid for us. Our path is, is going to be uncomfortable. And it's going to be hard. And it's going to be a trial. You know, being a Christian, especially in this world, you're going to have trials. God did not say, follow me and your life is going to be merry. It's like, no, follow me and you're going to have eternal life. But the road is going to be hard. And this is why I think the road is going to be hard. Because if you're just living in the world and you're not following God and you are not following the Holy Spirit and you're just living life, doing whatever you want, you know, the devil's really going to leave you alone. I mean, he, he doesn't have to fight for anything. He doesn't have to, to, to try and wear you down. He doesn't have to bring storms into your life. He doesn't have to bring the wrong people into your life. He doesn't have to do all that because more than likely you're already there. And so you're going to be going through life thinking that everything is hunky dory because you're not going through huge, huge trials and tribulations and, and, and stuff is working out for you. But again, the devil's not attacking you. The devil's going to leave you alone. But when you're a Christian, 
and you are following God's path and you are following God's word and you are following the Bible and you are ministering and you are are trying to bring more people into the kingdom of God and you are you are you're trying trying to bring in more followers and and spread the love of God and and you're going to come under attack because the devil doesn't want you to do that. The devil is going to try everything to stop you. The devil's goal is to kill, steal and destroy. He's he's going to come after you from every angle. He's going to come after you from by people you thought were your friends. He's going to come after you through your finances. He's going to come after you through your family. He's going to come after you through your health. He's going to do everything in his power to derail you, to stop you from worshiping, to stop you from praising, to stop you from praying. He is going to do everything in his power and it is going to be hard. But you have to stand on the foundation of the Lord and you have to stand on the promises of God that everything will work out for your good. You have to stand on those promises and you have to continue to pray and you have to continue to praise. You have to praise him in the good times and praise him in the bad times. You need to praise him harder whenever you are in the depths than you did whenever you got that new job. You need to praise him harder when you are in the depths than on the greatest day of your life. You need to praise him. We are so good at praising God and thanking God for, you know, getting the new job or finances being great or meeting the new, you know, love of your life or whatever it is. We're great at praising God then. And then whenever things get hard and things get rough, we, we say, God, where are you? Why'd you leave me? What, what's going on? And those are the moments that you need to praise him. Those are the moments that you need to praise the most. Praise in the good times, praise in the bad. Praise when you're happy, sad, angry, jealous. You know, just praise him and pray. Get down on your knees, spend that time with God. You know, and, and once you do pray, whether you're praying for blessings or you're giving thanks, because a lot of people forget to give thanks. Give thanks to God. Sometimes go to God in, 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 in thanks. Everything can be going wrong in your life and you want to pray so bad for blessings, instead go and just say, thank you, God. Thank you that I, that I got up today. Thank you for the blessings that I do have in my life. Sometimes we also forget to do that piece. I kind of got off track, but it, it's not me, it's God, because I, I feel that he, he, he wants you to hear this. Um, that the most powerful weapon that we have against evil is the spirit of God. The spirit that dwells within us is the most powerful weapon that we have against evil. And until you use that weapon and until you pray and you get out of his way and you say, devil, you can go somewhere else because it's not going to work here. You just... You just got to pray. You have to get out of his way. Let God work in your life. Let God work through your life. You know, in the Bible, it says 181 times in the King James Version to trust God. And in nowhere does it say to worry. And in nowhere does, does it say to dwell. And nowhere does it say anything like that just trust God trust God trust that God is gonna do what he has promised you he is going to do and that it's all gonna work you will get your blessings in his time you will see the fruits of your labor in his time if you get out of his way. You do what he asks you to do, even whenever it's uncomfortable in the flesh. That's when you'll see the blessings. So no matter what it is in your life, 
no matter what's going on, praise him, thank him, worship him, spend your quiet times with him, read your Bible, and do not give place to the devil. Do not give the devil a foothold because once you open that door and you give him a foothold, then he has authority and he's going to come in to kill, steal, and destroy. So keep your eyes on God. Keep your faith in him. Keep your trust in him. Pray to him whatever you desire. And then get out of his way. And if it is meant to be a blessing, and if it is meant to be something that he has designed for your life, it will come to pass in his time not yours. And remember, sometimes the things that we pray for, we're not going to get because we're praying with our flesh and, and it will do more harm than good. So praise him in the good times and praise him in the storms because sometimes those storms are clearing your path. Sometimes those storms end up being the biggest blessing that you will ever have. The biggest storm in my life brought the biggest blessing in my life, which is my husband. So continue to pray because that blessing didn't come until I was in the midst of that storm. And I finally laid at God's feet and stepped away and got out of his way because I couldn't do it. So that's it. That's what I wanted to tell y'all today. Praise him, get out of his way, and let him fulfill the promises that he has promised, I guess. I'm, I'm not very good at this, so um, yeah. But I love you all. I will see y'all in my next uh, painting video. And I hope everybody has a blessed day. God bless.